Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy Blessed Blessed 20, uh, 2023. So um, we uh, we come into this um, New Year, this Bible study, really with full of hope, full of um, positive expectation of good because of only one reason, because Christ is in us, because we are in in Christ. The I think this is the two most important words in the new covenant in the entire of the bible the dream fulfilled remember i sent you something you are abba daddy god's dream fulfilled in christ his he, he you you are redeemed his you are his dream fulfilled redeeming you this is dream fulfillment Kanda, no? as in you, you know this um uh i'm i'm uh um overflowing with i know with um thanksgiving and with excitement with excitement as i shared to you actually binigyan ko na ng ano eh glimpse itong si anda at si edda kasi nung isang araw say ko meron ko shinare sa kanila which i will share with you at the end of the ano parang ano di ba when you go to the when you go to snr ano ba sa singapore ang ano ang snr when you go to fair price ganyan yung fair yung malaking fair price Fair price extra ba yun? Parang ganyan. Di ba maraming silang taste test? Ganyan. Pinapataste ka for you to taste it and then eventually if you like it, you're gonna buy the whole thing. Ganyan. So parang ganun yung nangyari sa amin nila, ano, nila Edda at ni Anda nun sa araw which actually completely uh, uh, you know, exploded in my heart. I was, alam nyo ba na literally, while I was washing the, the, I was cleaning the toilet bowl, literally. I was cleaning the toilet bowl and it dropped in my heart. As in, I was, kasi ako ano ko eh, uh, pag natutuwa ako, actually pag na-overwhelm ako, na ano ko eh, uh, I, I, I made in such a way by Abba na madali ako maiyak. <laughs> ganyan. Para akong nanay ko. Ganyan. Sabi ko dati, bakit ka ganyan? Iyak ka ng iyak. Eh, ganun din pala ako. Ganun. So, chip from the, chip from my beautiful mother. Anyway, while I was cleaning the toilet bowl, the, 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 toy, the, the bathroom, actually, the revelation came, which I will share with you um, later on, which it will really, really bless you because it's very much connected to the topic tonight. So, without further ado, so the topic tonight is... Let me show you my PowerPoint. Um, the faith for everything. So, kanina, um, Ella asked the question, um, uh, if you have only, if you're asked to use faith, what are you going to use it for? Actually, when you read the book, it's very, very clear in the two pages, two, two and a half pages, Pastor Prince um, uh, encouraged all of us to really, uh, actually he nailed it eh, to use your faith for righteousness. Because that's your identification, that your and my identification. Uh, the righteousness that Jesus provided for at the cross actually literally paved the way for our sonship, for our inclusion, right, in the new covenant. For us to call him Abba Daddy God. Because without it, right, the with without us being made righteous, the the cross failed, right? So everything is hinging on righteousness. So if you have only one faith to use, it's to really for you to really really know in your heart, actually, that you are righteous. Kanina umaga while I was ano while I was biking, um, I asked a question from Alex. Um, trivia before I go to that question. In the Gospels, did you know that in the Gospels, Jesus is asked 183 questions of which he only directly answered three? Like, oh? But Jesus himself, when somebody is asking him a question, he asks, um, he asks a, when somebody is asking him a question, he answers by asking a question. That's actually a very Hebraic way of learning, actually, which we should, um, we should um, cultivate. Yung uh, wag tayong matakot na may yung tao eh may question kasi that's the way to learn. For example, the question that I asked from Alex kasi yung main text dun sa main text dun sa chapter is that 
Matthew 6, 31 to 33, di ba? Uh, do not worry about tomorrow, di ba? And then yung ending nun, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Say ko, so, so what does it mean for me now that I I am now a believer? Remember that the that those words were spoken by the Lord to the Hebrews, to the Jews. So hindi pa nangyayari yung cross, di ba? So yun yung question ngayon. So ikaw sabi ni Alex, oh, dapat mamaya i-discuss mo ko ano yung sick. Na, <laughs> sasabihin ko na lang sa inyo kasi hindi ko na pa so, so ang context nung seek ye first the kingdom of God is he was encouraging actually the people to, you know, not not to um uh uh, uh be be um be worried about uh what you eat, be worried about your body, what you're feeling, be worried what about your your finances, etc. Ang sabi niya, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness so fast forward diba cross there was a divine exchange right diba he was made sin so that we we are made the righteousness of god in christ and the moment you believe that right you and the moment that you believe that in your heart hindi na tayo dun sa seeking right ang ang gusto natin ngat natin ngayon is we 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 now the term is we we want to know more. We want to have our, our revelation, yung facets ng righteousness. What does it bring to me? Right? So, ngayon, yun yung gagawin natin. So, ah, maganda pala talaga yung nag-a-ask ng question. So when, Jesus, so, when Jesus was asked a question, his reply was addressed, was uh, was always to address the, the root of the question, the heart of the one who's asking the question. So his, his reply was usually to question the questioner. So makikita mo yan sa Luke 20, 1, uh, 1 to 3, and 20, 23. The Pharisees got so shocked by the by their root motives, hearts being exposed, that they eventually stopped asking Jesus questions. So for the teachers here, I know, uh, and also marketers, and actually us, di ba, sa mga magulang, we, uh, when our children ask us, right, we, 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 we ask them another, we ask, we ask them back the, the question para we, we get the context. Oh, ganun din si Lord. He encourages us to, because more often than not, when we ask him a question, the answer is already in, the, in, in your question. You just have to, you know, keep on pursuing it. Hallelujah. So, for example, are you tired? Sabi ganun ni Lord. Are you tired? Burn out. Burn out on religion. Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. You'll recover your life because you had you had you had it before you you have it already actually you have the life of Christ you just have to have this awareness this consciousness that His life is in you. That's why yung song ni Don Moen na ano na it all it all comes back to us na my life is in you Lord my strength is in you Lord you know it's really prophetic you have to declare it to yourself. In you, it's in you. I will show you how to take a real rest. Hallelujah. So, throughout Jesus' ministry, he found the greatest unbelief. What's the opposite of um, faith? Kasi, i-discuss natin yung, yung topic ngayon is um, uh, faith for everything, right? So, throughout Jesus' ministry, he found the greatest unbelief, which is the opposite of faith. Uh, unbelief is the op- opposite of faith, right? Among those who claim to have known him the longest. So, sometimes, no, parang, Familiarity breeds um, contempt or familiarity breeds um, complacency. Parang oh, alam ko na yun ni, eh. nini ko na yun. <laughs> parang parang pa natin dini discuss yun. His own neighbors or as Jesus put put it, his own country and his own house. You know, yung non-belief at saka unbelief is not the same. Ah. Non-belief is the state of people who have never heard the gospel. Yung unbelief is us can only exist where people already heard the gospel but still our hearts you know um needs to 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 have the revelation to fall down to our hearts you know i i'm not i know i'm not condemning you and i because if there's unbelief the only way the only way to remedy this situation is to hear and hear and hear some more hallelujah what the gospel 
Could it be that unbelief is still strongest in Jesus' own house today, the church, which is you and I? Ah, ah. So, kasi he said to them, no doubt you will quote this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard was done at Capernaum, do, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his own hometown. He never saw so huge unbelief, so huge an unbelief in unlike his in his hometown. Talagang namang ha siya sa unbelief nila. Hallelujah. So, faith is not you and I persuading God that you really trust Him. Di ba parang, Lord, I really trust you. That's not faith. Faith is God persuading you and I that He is really trustworthy. That's why the hearing of the gospel is so important. It is of primary, it's your imperative this year, my imperative, your imperative to really have our ears open to the gospel, not to good advice, ha? not to motivational preaching. Malalaman mo naman eh, these are the seven steps, these are the things that you have to do, but listen to the undiluted radical gospel of Jesus Christ. What he has done for you, not you, what you're going to do for him. What he has done for you, you will you will realize this actually when you are mouthing, you are enumerating that you will realize you will gauge yourself when when there is faith in your heart, when what you are saying is actually you're enumerating your what the things that you're doing for the Lord. Not that I'm saying that it's wrong. <laughs> you're enumerating enumerating the things for the Lord rather than declaring what he has done for you, because that's faith. Faith is God persuading you and I that He is really trustworthy. Without and this is this doesn't come. This doesn't come actually, because even the faith, faith, diba, we defined it already. Faith is a noun. Faith is a person. Faith is a who. Faith is not something that you do. And this comes with a revelation from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit only testifies, increases the faith. When the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, even the faith that we need, the Holy Spirit gives. Without the revelation from the Holy Spirit of how much we already have in Christ Jesus, we become vulnerable to contradictions, to symptoms, to religious ideas that our faith causes God to change his mind. That if only our faith was stronger, then God would give us what we want. That is to misunderstand what faith is. You know that it's Jesus, Jesus is in us. He is our faith. In Galatians 2.20, and this is really something that we really have to understand and munch on. I've been crucified with Christ. The, he, he, your death, your death, you died with Christ and you no longer live. Who now lives in you? Jesus, Jesus. So whatever it is that you are seeing that is contradicting the Christ life that's, that, is said, that is said in Galatians 2.20, that's saying Christ lives in you, reject it. Declare the gospel to yourself. It's no longer you who lives. No longer you. No longer you who has these symptoms. No longer you who, who is labeled as loser. No longer you has this problem. It is Christ living in you. The life you live in the body, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. Hallelujah. The faith of Jesus Christ is in you. Hallelujah. It's not your faith. It's Jesus Christ's faith. So now you can rest. You know what? I realized this. I was typing this. So now, Lord, it's just restful because it's not even my faith. And remember, your feel your what you're feeling is not your faith it's not faith right okay just declare just declare what i'm feeling is not my faith my faith is jesus who is in me hallelujah so this is papa right a parent does not tell a hungry child that they should eat more a parent feeds the child so you and i you and i no exclusion no exclusion you are a preacher, a gospel, an ambassador of the good news. 
to your family, to your friends. Ha! Hallelujah! Because the Holy Spirit is in you. There is no way but for you to overflow. So as a parent, you don't tell your, your children, right? You don't tell, you know, just... <coughs> Mo na lang yan. But you feed them. Never So never tell people that they should have more faith. Feed them the gospel by which faith comes. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17. So we have a gospel. A gospel bigger beyond any proportion to the effect of Adam's sin and transgressions. Bigger than drugs. Bigger than promiscuity. Bigger than vanity. Bigger than any any hideous disease, bigger than any distortion that sins this guy that sins this guys could ever represent, bigger than any disease and trauma of every kind. You know, in Romans 1 16, 17, the gospel is not about the extent of sin and what mankind does and did wrong. So long time ago, we used to preach this way. Makasalanan ka, makasalanan ka, dapat magrepent ka. No, that's not the gospel. The gospel is not enumerating the sins. The gospel is the glorious declaration that Jesus has come. It's the revelation of righteousness, what God did right in Christ on behalf of the whole human race. That Christ, that Jesus so loved for God, so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah! That's why, you know, it's um, even little children, you know, it's, it's, it's easily memorized because the Holy Spirit only testifies of Jesus Christ, not enumerating your sin. In Romans 1.16, in the Mirror Bible, I have no shame about sharing the good news of Christ with anyone. The powerful rescuing act of God persuades both Jew and Greek alike. Bakit both Jew and Greek alike? So it it, it covers actually um, uh, the nation of Israel and the entire gentile gentile uh, gentile world. Herein in seventeen, herein lies the secret of the power of the gospel. There is no good news in it until the righteousness of God is revealed. If the gospel that is being preached doesn't declare you as righteous, then it's not the gospel. You are righteous. You are declared righteous in Christ. Hallelujah. That is who you are. The dynamic of the gospel is the revelation of God's faith as the only valid basis for our belief. That is, that this is um, as if, uh, uh, another way of saying, if you only have one, one use of your faith, right? Use it for righteousness. The dynamic of the gospel is the revelation of God's faith. What is God's faith? That you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. That is God's faith. As the only basis for your belief. Hallelujah. So the prophets wrote in advance. So this is the uh, notes in the uh, Mirror Bible. Huh? The prophets wrote in advance about the fact that God believes that righteousness unveils the life that he always had in mind for us. Righteousness by his faith defines life. The good news is the fact that the cross of Christ was a success. God rescued the life of our design. He redeemed our innocence. Man will never be again judged righteous or unrighteous by his own ability to obey moral laws. It's not about what man must, must or must not do, but about what Jesus has done. It is from faith to faith and not man's good or bad behavior or circumstances interpreted as a blessing or a curse. In Habakkuk 2 and 4, because Romans 1, 16 and 17 reference Habakkuk 2, 4. Instead of reading the curse when disaster strikes, siba, you can hear, you know, uh, it's going to be a difficult, no, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're living from a, he from a different realm. Hallelujah. You are declared righteous. It's a mouthful, and you will see later, when you are declared righteous, you are declared healed. You are declared provided for. Hallelujah. So Habakkuk realizes that the promise outdates the performance as the basis to man's acquittal. Deuteronomy would no longer be the motivation or the measure of right or wrong behavior. In Habakkuk 3, 17-19, though the fig trees do not blossom, 
nor fruit be on the vines. The produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold. It, it sounds like famine, no? Sabi niya, yeah! Sabi niya nun. The righteous be the righteous one. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will I will joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like hinds feet. He makes me tread upon high places. So look away, look away from the from from the law of works. Look away from contradictions, but look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So the gospel is the glorious revelation of the righteousness of God. Now in us, it declares how God succeeded to put mankind right with him. It is about what God did right, not what you and I, Adam, did wrong. The word righteousness came from the Anglo-Saxon word right, right, right wiseness. Wise in that which is right. In Greek, the root word for righteousness is dike, which means two parties finding likeness in each other. You know, God doesn't only love you. He likes you. He likes me. He likes hanging out with you because he likes talking to you. Your Abba Daddy God likes to talk to you. Hallelujah. The Hebrew word for righteousness is chado, which refers to a beam. Yung, yung, uh, uh, remember, yung, um, you know, in the, in the, um, um, in the horoscope, right? Uh, merong woman na may, may uh, scale, scale of beams. So the Lord is saying, you are righteous. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Hallelujah. And this is this will really blow your mind. Romans 4.25 in both Mirror and YLT. Here is the equation. He was handed over because of humanity's fallen condition. He was raised. He was raised because we were declared righteous. If you and I were not declared righteous, if the cross failed, we will not, he will not be declared, he will not be resurrected. His resurrection is the official receipt to your acquittal. Because you are declared righteous, Jesus was raised from the dead and we were raised together with him. In YLT, it's very, very clear. Who was delivered up because of our offenses at the cross and was raised up because of our being declared righteous. You and I are righteous, hallelujah, by the grace of God. This is the power of the gospel to bring us out of religion and into relationship with the Father we never knew. The gospel is not the news of what might be. If you, it is finished, it is the gospel. If it is the gospel, it's not the news of what might be. If you, it is the news of what is because he, Christ, the news of what is because he, Christ. Hallelujah. So let us change our perspective because a person's perspective is often described in terms of whether they are glass half full or glass half empty. So I showed you this one, right? So being new covenant people, right? We are no more pessimists. We're even not optimists. We are psalmists. We see that our cup runs over because we are righteous. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Believer, that is who you are. And that righteousness <coughs> afforded you sonship. Those who are led by the Spirit of God and so who are able to live as sons of God because now the Holy Spirit is in you because you were declared righteous. Now you're sons of God. Our glass overflowing people for they can see that the cross is the big, biggest overpayment in history it's the biggest overpayment in history hallelujah so to live by the faith of the son of god is to live that you've been made the righteousness of god and it means to live in the consciousness that the same righteousness that jesus enjoys is the same righteousness that you enjoy the same sonship that jesus enjoys you enjoy hallelujah is jesus healthy so you are is Jesus wealthy? So you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the glorious gospel causes men and women to ascend in their thinking into their union with Christ. Now, because of that righteousness, right? The Lord is saying for this year, right? Lord, is, is there more? Right? Is there more revelation? Because you've already told us the gospel of grace. Now, uh, 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 you, 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 you've told us about our unshakable, unbreakable 
union with the Lord is there more? Oh, there's so much more. To discover the glorious gospel causes men and women tayo, to ascend, ascend in our revelation, in our union with Him. What does it, what does it mean? Only from that revelation can the church, you and I, finally stop trying to move God to do more or give more. For in Christ, all that has to be done has been done. It's already done. And all that has to be given has been given. It is finished. In exchange for all the sins you could ever commit in one lifetime, we got an eternity of righteousness. Hallelujah! So a mind that has been persuaded that righteousness is a gift does not believe that God needs to be moved. We do not. We don't need to do, to do all the acrobatics. We don't need to. You know, I I will do this. I will do this, Lord. I will serve you, etc. No, He doesn't need it. It's us who needs to be persuaded that He's trustworthy. That from people from from being a people of promise to now people of presence, realizing that the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Hallelujah! But the righteousness of faith speaks this way you and i right new covenant people have to speak this way do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring christ down from above or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring christ up from the dead but what does it say what does it say Parang, um, 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 in, 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 in an other paraphrase right what do i have to do right what do i have to do will i to to, to you know to have this faith but in Romans 10, 8, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Romans 10, 8, who is the word? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. Who is the word? It's Jesus. Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your righteousness. So in God's eternal life, now you and I, right? We have eternal life. Eternal life of knowing Him. The time is always now. It's now. It's now. We we don't. We are not living in the um, um in the Chronos time. We are living outside time because the Lord is out operating in outside time, right? Kairos time. Because in Proverbs thirteen twelve, if you have this mentality, na, I will wait. I will wait for it to manifest. I will wait for it to um uh to appear to appear in my eyes. You know, it, it will make your heart sick. It will make you sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Christian discipleship, just like what we're doing right now, is simply growing up. We are growing up into the revelation, into the now of the in Christ life. Hallelujah. In God's eternal life, the time is always now. But for the glorious eternal life of God to be seen in our lives, our minds have to be made new. That, that's why we, we have to have renewed minds to this truth that in God's eternal life, the time is always now. So in God's eternal life, in Christ, that's why, sabi ni kung kung paanda, right? Di ba? The present is a gift. Hallelujah! So in God's eternal life, in Christ, in Christ, now you are righteous in christ now you are healed in christ now you have been abundantly provided for in christ now you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm don't care anymore what happened to you this happened to you this happened to me i'm feeling this but what the lord is saying now 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 because in god's eternal life the time is always now in god's eternal life all the promises of god are now yes and amen in christ so but we find this hard to believe though no? we have been brought up in a world that has lived apart from experiencing god's eternal life apart from god's now but the gospel is not the proclamation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil like wait and see the people may partake of that knowledge and then do something about the evil in their lives. The gospel is the proclamation of a dream fulfilled. A tree of life that God has done what you could never do, no matter how much you know about good and evil. To the naturally minded church, waiting for God to hear them, waiting for God to help them is still not saying 
we plead in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, you know, we plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. When was that? At the cross. In the, in the day of salvation, I have helped you. When was that? At the cross. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Look to the cross where your provision is. Look to the cross where your healing is. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Communion is most powerful. When we look at the elements, we look at our healing now. When we look, when we drink of the cup, we are declaring we are the righteousness of God in Christ. I am provided for. Diba? What you eat becomes a part of you. Hallelujah! Think about it. When you partake of the bread, like you are partaking of his body. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You are, celeb you are celebrating his oneness with you. Hallelujah! So the gospel declares that you, your obedience, and I'm saying it with uh, uh, with um, um, very carefully and tender, you know, because I used to be, I used to have this per percep perspective also before. The gospel that declare, the gospel that declares that you, your obedience, your prayer life, even your giving, are not your hope, but Christ in you is your hope. The gospel that declares that the blessing of God are not out there waiting to be achieved, but that they're all in Christ and you and He you already have received. The gospel that declares that believers have already been blessed in the heavenly realm with, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That is the gospel. So this is the literally those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You have to intertwine your thoughts. You wait on. It's for you to intertwine your thoughts that your healing is now, that your provision is now, that all has been provided for at the cross because you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. And that's what Pastor Prince is saying, what he means by using your faith for only one, and that is righteousness. Hallelujah. So in Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead now lives in union with you, he who raised Jesus, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, to his spirit who dwells in you. Why? Because of the righteousness provided to you. In, in the mere Bible, our union with Christ further reveals that because the same spirit that awakened the body of Jesus from the dead inhabits us, we equally participate. He wants us to do things with him. He doesn't want to do he want he doesn't want us to do things for him. He wants us to do things with him. Participate in his resurrection. In the same act of authority whereby God raised Jesus from the dead, he co-restores your body to life by his indwelling spirit. Your body need never again be an excuse for an inferior expression of Christ's life. Just as it was reckoned dead in Christ's death. It is now reckoned alive. Reckon now yourself. Reckon now yourself. Your body alive in his resurrection. Declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, turning point. We often think of the new year as a turning point because we are looking for a turning point. But in Romans 4, in speaking of Abraham, now we go to Abraham, the father of faith, our father Abraham. But in, 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 in speaking of Abraham, talks about his turning point coming when he entered into what God was doing rather than ask God to bless what he was doing. There's a difference. Huh? Abraham entered into what God was doing. And what, 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 what is God doing? The gospel of Jesus Christ declaring to you, if Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he, would, he could certainly have taken credit for it. For it. But the story we're given is a God story, not, a, an, not an Abraham story. It's also our story. What we read in scripture is Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. Child of God, enter into his rest. Enter into the truth. Believe. Believe. Have faith for righteousness. God, what God was doing for him, that, that was the turning point. Hallelujah. And, 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 and I believe with all of my heart as this being declared, 
all of us are having our turning points. Hallelujah. So I feel we are such at a moment for the body in general. A lot of our works are going to die off despite our best efforts to breathe more life into them. So there are things that we think we are doing, right? That, um, you know, we're doing for God, but we're not doing it with God. You know that it will naturally, uh, or, or things that we are thinking, wrong thinking that will be shaken off, that will be just fall off because of the revelation of his grace. He will continue to shake what can be shaken so we can experience the blessing of our revelation of what we already have in Christ that cannot be shaken. So, for this year, don't put your hope in a year. Don't put your hope off one more day. Like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, why not? No! See it in the Spirit! You are Him! You are provided for! You are provided for for what? For a lifetime partner? For a career? For a ministry, for a uh, uh, happy family life, it's done. Don't put your hope off one more day, for your hope is with you today. Who is that? Jesus. And your turning point will come when you enter into the truth of the hope that is already there. Christ in you, the hope of glory. For this year, my prayer for you and I is we have this consciousness and awareness right of of his nearness of christ in us the hope of glory hallelujah and you know in genesis 17 18 you know that um uh um there's a abraham had two children abraham abraham had isaac and abraham and ishmael he thought uh he was helping god so he had hagar so they had he had ishmael Ishmael is um, not the child of promise as we know because um, us is from the line of Isaac. We are children of happiness, of laughter. And he, his heart was so heartbroken for Ishmael. You know that in the, I discovered actually, and this is what I shared in Anda and with, uh, and with uh, Edda. He was begging God actually to, um, to bless um Ishmael you know in um in uh in in in, in NKJV NASB NLT you will see that um Genesis 17 18 will say um um that uh uh Ishmael might live under your blessing but you know what in Genesis 17 Abraham said in ISV so Abraham responded to God if only Ishmael would live in constant awareness that you're always with him. Abraham knew, Abraham knew actually that this is this is actually what God has desired also for Ishmael because this was precisely what was given to him in Genesis 17.1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and announced, I am God Almighty. Live in constant awareness that I'm always with you. Live in constant awareness that I'm always with you. The constant awareness, the constant consciousness that is always with us will result into us, you know, uh, uh, being accidentally holy and be blameless. Not doing, but being. So for this year, for this year, my prayer, my prayer for you and I is that we be so conscious of our righteousness in him and because of that we've been made the right because we've been made the righteousness of god in christ he is in us and our, our awareness is so constant and and gets bigger and bigger that he's always with us that he's always with us and no matter what no matter what we face right we can be we can face it with with uh with with a with uh with so much boldness right and declare jesus in every situation declare grace in each situation that we will not cower down that we will not you know cry and beg god to help no god is saying what god god said to uh to, to moses right why are you crying right raise your staff right raise your staff so that the red sea will part so because one thing, 
Moses realized Moses realized that God was with him. So my dear brothers and my dear brother and sisters, for this 2023, the Lord and and I I firmly believe it in in my heart that the Lord wants us to really live in greater constant awareness and huge consciousness that he's always with us. He will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And that, my dear sisters, is chapter 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.